So uh, I'm just going to run through a, a very quick uh, demonstration of the configuration that I've got set up to show the new Smart Connector Load Balancing uh, feature that's available now with the Smart Connector release uh, 7.1.4 and later uh, as of September 2015. Now, we've actually got a lot of uh, capability around this. Now, I'm just going to run through a very simple scenario just to show a test bed of, uh, of how it's operating and what it's doing as part of the process. Um, so what do we got? Well, uh, in order to uh, to show this, I'm actually running a, a, a couple of virtual machines. I've got two connectors, uh, two separate connector machines here, and one load balancing machine here. Um, the two connectors are just running a straightforward uh, syslog UDP uh, receiver, uh, and it's then sending on to a logger at the back end. Uh, that's working uh, okay. Uh, the, the important thing is the two connectors are sending to one receiver. Uh, I've got uh, connector one is on a dot two two one, and connector two is on a dot two two two, and my loads balancing machine is on a dot two twenty. So if I just jump to the uh, logger configuration briefly, uh, it's actually been sent into this particular smart receiver, so we can see load balancer. It's just a standard smart message receiver, nothing more sophisticated than that. Uh, in fact, actually, I, I, can, I can see that information uh, in the summary. I can see there's a whole load of data that's going into there as well. Uh, I want to actually just do a quick search in a minute just to just have a look at that data itself. So what is it actually doing? Well, uh, what we can see here is these two connectors, but what the load balance is doing itself is it's actually connecting to those uh, two separate smart connector components. It's not the server platform itself, it's connecting to the smart connector components to check the runtime, check the statistics, understand what's going on, and to which connectors to include in the overall load balancing pool. So I've only got two here, so it's just a testbed environment, but uh, we can see that it's actually, uh, it, it's running away in the background here, but, but it, uh, if I scroll up through the uh, tailed log message here, uh, you can see that it's actually getting some of these since last check messages. Uh, we can see that it's actually double checking on the overall connectors as well. That's more obvious if I do just go to the actual connectors themselves. We can see again, if I just tail the log message here, I can see that that .220 machine uh, itself is actually logging into the uh, the connectors themselves. So that's the load balancer it's logging into the connector itself, doing it through the remote management port. Uh, and it's doing a check on what's actually going on. Uh, we can see that in the, in the actual tailed log message there. We can also see it in the wrapper as well. So we can see there's a processing request from that IP address. Uh, and again, we can see that in the, uh, in the connector two as well. So it's doing frequent checks against those to probe and make sure that it's, uh, it's working. Now the load balancing configuration is just using a round robin. I could do weighted round robin. There's lots of additional options and rules that I can define. I can actually define multiple uh, pools and methods for doing this, but I've got a very simple setup just just to prove what's going on. Uh, now, what I do need to do is actually show some data going through. So uh, I've just got a, a Kiwi syslog message generator here. So again, I'm just going to send this to, to UDP. And the important thing is you're sending this to 220. So it's sending it to the load balancer. I actually do a slightly different port here, but uh, I'm just doing it to 220. And that load balancing component then forward that to two particular connectors to then uh, do the processing. So if I just start that, uh, it's just UDP, and I'm just sending that data through. Uh, and it'll just get processed as, as I'd expect to, to to see uh, as normal. In fact, if I if I look at uh, some of the information, I can start to see uh, that there's some data being processed already. Uh, if I actually jump to the other connector, I should see there's also again some some information being processed as well. So, what does it look like at the back end? Well, uh, let, let's just jump to uh, the logger interface and jump to the search panel for a second. Um, I've just done a simple search here looking for the host name. Remember those two connectors, one was called connector one and one was called connector two. So if I just do a very simple search on those, I should see the messages that come through uh, from those two separate uh, smart connectors going through into the logger. So just give it a second to actually process that search there. So we can see there's lots of data in there. And hey presto, we've got our, uh, this is a test message generated by Kiwi Syslog. Uh, that's fair enough. Um, and we can see that it's actually uh, come from a particular address, which is my workstation. Uh, and we can see, uh, well, in this particular case, it's from that particular connector. Uh, but we can uh, scroll through and we can see uh, how things are being processed. We can see there's a bunch of load of connector ones. We can see a bunch of load of connector twos uh, in there as well. So we can see what it's actually doing is it, it's, it's taking that message and it's putting it through two different connectors as we'd expect to see it. It's still processed the same. This is, this is just a straight 
forward to this log message. There's no other data in there for it to do any categorization or normalization. But we can see that it's bouncing through different two different connectors according to what I'm seeing. Again, if I just do another quick search, I'm sending a message every second. Uh, so we can see uh, there's a lot, going to be lots of different ways that it's going to process that data through different um, uh, different connectors. So if I just scroll across there, lots of connector twos, lots of connector ones, and so on. Um, so that's great. We can show that we're actually balancing that across automatically, uh, and we can show that uh, that that simple uh, log message that we're sending through uh, is actually going into this load balancer on dot 220, and it's going through one connector and another connector on a round robin basis. Like I say, there's different rules that we can do to process and configure that as well, uh, which I'll talk more about later of, of how this is set up and the process we go through doing that. So that's a very quick run through of how we do that uh, and what it looks like, but I uh, will cover more on the actual configuration and the process required. Thank you very much.